Yeah. This Sir, we are starting now. Uh, respected uh, senior INS executive members and INS members and friends, I once again welcome you all to this 16th webinar series program. Uh, webinar is an important initiative of INS to be in communication with the honorable members and other participants who are joining us virtually. We invite eminent speakers, executives, and accomplished individuals in the field of nuclear science, engineering, and the allied subject. Today, we are going to hear yet another very important talk on the front-end supply and challenges. We have invited Dr. C.K. Asnani, CMD UCI. He will be talking to us on uranium ore mining and processing for energizing the front-end of Indian nuclear fuel cycle. As we all know, this is a very important topic for DAE. The entire DAE program involving energy and research depends on the success of UCIL. Sir, you are occupying a very important position and certainly facing numerous challenges. On behalf of INS, I welcome you to this uh, webinar. If I talk uh, a little bit of a comparison, uh, we have heard uh, an FCI, you know, Fit Corporation of India, facing huge problem of of buying food grains from the farmers. I wish there will be a separate UCI for abundant availability of uranium for nuclear, Indian nuclear program. This is my dream for the department. Sir, I welcome you again for this webinar program on behalf of INS and I wish you all success in your endeavor. I do not know how many of us have seen the mines, mills and the processing facilities. The mined rocks going on the conveyor belt and after precipitation, we see yellow cake like a magic. One has to really see the see to appreciate the chemical process. So I have to, inf yeah. So this is uh, uh, something we have to really go and see in UCIL, how beautifully it happens. So there is one uh, uh, correction that I have to mention to my viewers that uh, uh, all the virtual audience to note that uh, we, uh, the CMD UCIL, uh, Dr. C.K. Asnani, on, on the request of DAE, had to go to Titipurin. So he is not available today. So in his place, uh, one general manager minds, Sri uh, Chanchal Manna, he is going to make the presentation and share the presentation of uh, Dr. Ansari, uh, Asnani. So before I uh, all the speakers, uh, I will request our president, Sri S.K. Mehta, to give his opening remark. And then we will have uh, an introduction to the speaker. And then the, uh, in the, speak the person introducing the speaker will call the, uh, uh, the speaker of today's webinar to give his presentation. Mehta, sir. Well, th thank you, Dr. Samarao. Uh, let me welcome all the persons, all my friends, INS members, invitees and the speaker to this important webinar. Uh, I recall that uh, at the point of joining the Finnish school in 57, one of the major activities that we used to hear was uh, is mining and uranium. At that, time. at that time, we were told that it's so limited in India that we can only have 8,000 megawatt capacity installed. But today, I understand in uh, one of the interactions with the Dr. Bossi that the situation has changed quite a bit. Of course, there is a lot of uranium available from outside also, but we have to depend upon our own government. So the uranium corporation of India has gone through many, many challenges. I, as a student, I have visited some of the mines for other kind of materials. I know the kind of processes that go down, you have to go down into that and go into very isolated places. But the, the, the challenges are very many. And I think the, we will be today glad to hear all the uh, challenges that have been faced and how they have overcome that problem. So let me welcome Dr. Manna and I ask him to convey my regards to Dr. Swami without accepting our invitation. Okay. Uh, Raman, uh, can you introduce the speaker? Yeah, uh, good, good evening to all. And uh, on behalf of uh, INS, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Manna. As, as already 
informed by uh, Mr. Ramarao, Mr. Asnani could not be here and he had to go on an urgent uh, assignment. But uh, uh, we know that he's a chemical engineer with 30 years experience. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, 30 years of experience in the entire life cycle of uranium, starting from deep underground mining, processing, refining to product to produce nuclear grade uranium, as well as spent fuel reprocessing to recover strategic plutonium and depleted uranium. He has been a recipient of BA, BA award for excellence in science and technology, amongst others. Uh, since he is not there, however, we are fortunate to have an equally experienced and accomplished senior colleague, Sri Chanchal Manna, General Manager of Mines who will make this presentation uh, on this important topic. Sri Chanchal Manna is a BE mining from Shippur Engineering College, Kolkata. He joined UCIL as a graduate engineer trainee in 1995 and has more than 26 years of experience in uranium mining in India. He's presently looking after the work of Turamdi group of mines, Tumalapalli mines and Turamdi mill operations. Some of his noteworthy contributions are as follows. He was directly associated with the third stage shaft construction, equipping and commissioning work at Jaduguda, the deepest underground uranium mine in India. This operation extended mining from 495 meters below sea level, mean sea level, to 905 meters uh, deep uh, below mean sea level, which is really a noteworthy achievement. He has vast experience in opening of greenfield mining projects and has successfully commissioned the Bagdata uranium project in a record period of three and a half years. He is also an expert in the operations of open cast uranium mines at Bandhurang, which is the only open cast uranium mine in the country. Sri Manna has an outstanding track record with Bagjata Uranium Mine under his leadership as mine manager having been awarded the National Safety Awards in Mine Safety for five successive years by the Ministry of Labor and Employment, Government of India. He has also been awarded by DGMS for his commendable role in conducting rescue operations during an accident, unfortunately, which took place at Jaduguda uh, with minimum uh, casualties. He is regarded as a rescue and recovery expert world over and has been nominated to attend the International Mines Rescue Conference in Australia. Uh, there's much more, but I think I will uh, we'll leave it for some other time. And uh, it's now my uh, privilege to invite Mr. Manna to come forward and commence the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good evening. Myself, Chanchal Manna, General Manager, Mines. Before start the talk on the subject matter, I like to thank all participants of a distinguished member of nuclear Indian Nuclear Society, scientists, engineers, and senior officials to join in this program through Zoom platform. I also sincerely thank to our honorable chairman and managing director, Dr. C. K. Asnani for giving me this opportunity to deliver this lecture on behalf of him, as he is busy with works and unable to deliver. It is my pleasure to deliver this talk before the distinguished members of Indian Nuclear Society, especially to Dr. Amara for allowing me for this talk. Dear sir, as you all know that Uranium Corporation of India Limited, a government of a public enterprise government of India under the Department of Atomic Energy is mandated to uranium mineral mining and processing following the different rules, uh, regulation, guidelines under the Atomic Energy Act 1962. UCL is established in 1967 and started its operation with a single mill and mines at Jadugara at East Singhum, Jharkhand. After formation of corporation, Uranium Corporation of India Limited served the nation first time by dispatching first yellow cake in February 1968. Is 
system. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. A brief introduction to Uranium Corporation. The Uranium Corporation of India Limited, under the administrative control of Department of Atomic Energy, I have already said, established in 16 October in 1967 with the novel objective of mining and processing of uranium ore for use in the atomic power plant in the country. The era of uranium mining and milling started with the discovery of uranium deposit at Jadugara in 1950-51. And detailed exploration and establishment of resource was done by Atomic Mineral Division, exploration and research. And they started the mines and mills at Jadugara. The mining activity started at Jadugara in the year 1960. The regular, regular production at Jadugura mines begins in the year 1967. With the journey of one mines and one mill, we started in 1967. Now we are operating eight mines and three processing unit. Out of that seven mines, are at Jharkhand in East Singhum region. And we have two processing plants at Jharkhand, one at, at Jadugara and another at Turambi. Out of seven mines at Singhum area, we have only open cast mines and Bandugura open cast at, at Bandugura. We have one state of the art mine at Tumulapulli Andhra process and a process plant there. Now there are a number of projects which are under private lines in Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, Karnataka, Telangana, and Chhattisgarh. So this is the ghost history of Uranium Corporation. So commissioning of Jadugura mine in 1960 and commissioning of Jadugura mill, we start the operation as a corporation with one mill and one mine with thousand tons of capacity. Now presently, we are running three process, uh, seven, eight numbers of mines and three processing plants. And we are daily handling almost 8,000 tons of uranium mineral. And uh, the promising new projects, which I will come in, in near future, uh, the Tumala Bulli expansion, the Royal project, and and Kanampulli project. This project is a promising project and this project will come in the near future. So if you see the uranium resources in India, almost everywhere in the country, in every corner, there are deposits of uranium and discovered by atomic mineral diversions, uh, research and exploration. But major three provisions is the Jharkhand Singhum Siyar zone. This zone is almost 160 kilometers long and almost five to seven kilometers in width. In the eastern part, we have famous copper deposits where Hindustan Copper Limited works in number of mines. And in the western part, the occurrences of uranium deposits are there. And in this area, we have seven numbers of mines six number underground mines and one open cast mines. Next important province uh, is uh, your Andhra Pradesh Kodapa Basin, where we are already uh, mining at Tumalapulli and also milling. Our milling capacity is 3,000 tons. Mines is uh, successfully operating and producing 3,000 TPD. And next important provinces, 
that is uh, not really fold belt and we are in a very advanced stage of opening up in the mines at rohel with a capacity of 3000 ton uh, we are likely to get loi in very uh, we will get uh, within uh, some time and we will start the mining operation there and also the mohadek basin at meghalaya that is very also important area but due to some uh, socio and uh, political reason we uh, would have not been able to open up the mines at meghalaya next uh, worldwide uh, if you see mining wise of uranium mining the most followed method is in situ leaching that is almost 44.9% underground mining method is 26.2% open cast mining method 19.9% and uh, by by product from different copper deposit etc that is 7.3% and heap leaching 1.7% in our case in india we are following the underground mining method and open cast mining method next now i will discuss the uranium mining at jharkhand uh usil is uh, practicing mining in uranium ore body which are moderate to thin in weight in initial stages at jadugora we were following a very a conventional system of mining that is uh, open stopping sinkage stopping and finally we use conventional cut and fill method with introduction of uh, some tagless machineries that we call we use to uh, we we, we uh, follow the intermediate technology at jadugora at present almost all of our mines adopting tagless mining system which are all mechanized with diesel load hole dumper lpdt and electro hydraulically operated drill jumbo and almost in all mines we are following the post filler cut and fill method of stopping and drill jumbos are used for drilling and uh, diesel lsd and lpdt are used for marking and transportation purposes and different kinds of service vehicles also we use like passenger carrier scissor lifters rock bolting machines etc next so we are in this slide showing the 3d ore body modeling of our turamdi deposit so you are seeing the different loads there are so many loads in this uh, mineralized zone next so this is a schematic diagram showing the cut and fill method with post filler method i am not going in details uh, into uh, the the the, uh, the working practice so this is the schematic diagram showing the cut and fill with post filler method next now you see when we start mining we start from the bottom and uh, we take slicing and uh, gradually we go up up to the top horizon and here you are see the cross cuts and access from ram down then like this this is the sequence of operation of cut and fill method yeah we start the cut and fill stopping at the bottom horizon and gradually we fill it and take again slide and uh, make accesses on different horizons and ultimately we reach at the topmost portion and uh, we leave the barrier uh, your crown pillar at the top of the level uh, this depicts the 
vertical longitudinal sections of the mines the very important thing is that we have to create very conducive environment for our workers so that they can work underground and thought that the one of the important aspect is the mine ventilations what we do we push a huge quantity of fresh air underground and allow it to course in different working areas and ultimately we suck it by putting some exhaust fan on the top of the shaft or ventilation shaft so this is a diagram generally what we do for ventilation we try to change the air at least two to three times in the hour so that the mines get fresh air and we can create a good environment to work in uranium mines next so that you see if you we it is very difficult to identify the ore inside the mineralized zone because the kanti rock and hoss rock are same in color by visual, uh, visually it is not possible to identify the ore that is why we use uh, radiometric scanning for determination of ore and waste our experts the geophysicist it is their daily routine job every day they go underground and uh, mark the area of ore which are taken under mining operation like drilling and blasting and others next and a very important aspect of identifying ore body underground and that back for we are our geologist they put uh, these holes for drilling for demarcation of ore body inside the mines once they give us the actual data of ore results in a particular horizon or particular areas then only the mining engineers can develop the block for extraction of ore next so this is a drilling operation in place as once the ore is identified by geophysicist then we start drilling operation by drill jumbo for blasting you see in mining there are four unit operations one is drilling other is blasting third is uh, your uh, loose dressing and uh, supporting and lastly the transportation of mark from the face so this slide shows the operation of drill jumbo in an working face in the stone and after blasting the mark is removed using low profile load hole dumper here we are showing the operation the broken mark is loaded by uh, is is, is uh, loaded by lhd and dumped it into lpdt another vehicle you so next next slide so lhd mark and uh, dump it in the low profile dump truck this low profile dump truck is used in underground for carrying the ore directly from underground to surface sometimes if the mines uh, is in the shallow depth and if the mines depth is uh, more then at that case lpdt is used to dump the ore in the grizzly area and ultimately entire ore the broken mark is sent to a ore pass two ore passes goes to underground in the crossing system where it is crushed to give a size and then hoisted through vertical shaft arrangement uh, by winding system this is the crushing arrangement underground the ore which are broken and transported and dumped on the upper levels finally stored in the ore bins in a in a place near the shaft and then it is crushed using crusher and then hoisted up by uh, the crushed ore by hoisting arrangement and winder uh, this is the 
rock bolting drilling in the room you see in the mines we work in the opening of a close camp in an, in an opening uh, against the nature the most uh, dangerous operations uh, anything can happen if we do not take the safety and security aspect uh, very uh, and here what we do so after the exposure of the row we reinforce it by putting rock bolts so this operation is being carried out underground the rock bolt for reinforcement of strata on the roof this is the operation of actual grouting operation we are using a vehicle named scissor lifter and we are putting the rock bolt to the roof and sometimes our sides also for safety and security of the working place now uranium mining at tumulapulli this is the southern region next so you see the the the, the major uranium province now in india that is in korappa uh, basin where we are having carboniferous uh, dolomitic uranium deposit and huge amount of ore reserves have been discovered by amd but uh, thing is that the though the quantity the, the reserve is huge but grade is not good but still so major area where we get a huge amount of ore so one mines we have already operating there that is at tumalapulli this red spotted are showing the deposits the uranium occurrences next uh, you see the uranium deposits at tumalapulli area is massive limestone then conglomerate chetty limestone then purple shale and over baden here at tumalapulli we have next next slide. there are two loads you see hangwall band and footwall band this uh, strata mount ore bodies but there are there is a, a one to four meter of waste parting in between these two loads footwall load is one say 1.6 to 1.8 meter wheel and hangwall load is uh, almost uh, 2 to 2.6 meter in wheel but major difficulty is that just vicinity of hangwall band there is cell that poses the major threat when we design and develop the mining method in this uh, seam like ore body it is just like coal seam it's also its gradient is also not favorable gradient is 14 to 17 degree anything below 25 degree having gradient below 25 degree it is very difficult to design a mine but uranium corporation of india limited uh, with the help of different scientific bodies like simpar ism dhanbad and uh, uh, nir we have successfully developed the mining method to extract the ore excellent next slide so uranium mineralization is hosted in a tabular and strata bound dolomitic limestone called dolostone i have already told there are two parallel ore bands designated as hangwall and footwall separated about 3.07 meter of average barren zone and uniferous dolostone is uh, sandwiched between lower massive limestone and upper shell the strata bound uranium deposit of tmpl is one of its kind and it is not found anywhere in the world the mine is designed and operated in a unique manner and this kind of mining is not followed in any parts of the world first time it has been developed and being mined successfully by uranium corporation of india limited the major problem 
for doing mining in this Tumlapuli mine is there are two loads and having one to four meter waste putting in between. So the, the management of this 1.4 meter waste putting is very difficult. On the same time, the overlying rock, just vicinity of hangwall load, is purple cell, which poses a very challenge in safety and security of mine opening, driving, and stopping operations. You cannot expose the purple cell. It is most treacherous rock. Uh, visually, the threat cannot be pretended, but if we expose it, it can collapse anytime without any giving any signal, without giving any warning. So it is a, a very difficult kinds of law to operate the stopping operation or in a diverge operation in old body. So both the loads, loads are thin. So hang wall is on an average 2.6 meter, uh, foot wall is 1.4 to 1.8 meter. So developing of ore body, that is opening of mine in this kind, such kind of way, when we make roadways uh, for development. So if we take that the opening size, the minimum opening size which are required for tagless mining, that is almost say five meter by three meter. And if we take the blast, then it will be totally absolute waste. So to avoid dilution, we are practicing partial blasting. In the opening, first we take the blasting in the ore zone. We remove the ore. And then again, we take the blast in the waste to give the actual opening size, which we required for movement of my missionaries. Yes. So here in this picture, you are seeing the actual operations. This is drilling operation, sandwich bag, electrohydraulic drilling basins, drilling operation is on. Uh, you see the footwall stroke dive. We have approached in the footwall. Then we are seeing the parting. Then over the parting, there is hangwall load. And just vicinity of hangwall, there is cell. Next slide. This is the drilling operation in the ore. Next. Now, this is a room and pillar mining method. So any mine, so when we design, it has uh, two aspects. One is the mine construction and ore extraction. That is the stopping. So when we develop a mines, we have uh, the mine construction at two parts. One is to make accesses for giving the permanent roadways to make a circuit inside the mines. And second, development is, is done to mine construction is done to extract the ore bodies from stoves. Here in this slide, we are showing the formation of block, which will ultimately will be extracted out during the course of stooping operations. So that is upper ASD, we are saying in Tumalapulli, this is called ASD, advanced strike dive, and below the lower level ASD. In between these two levels, so ore body block is formed. And uh, this ram are made in an apparent direction, in a nine degree gradient. And once this uh, block is, uh, block is, uh, formed and permitted by DGMS, we start operation. I will show in the next slices the sequence of operations. Next. Then you see we are making different roadways inside the ore body. These are basically drive edges in the foot wall. And uh, then next uh, sequence is the actual uh, yeah. Here you see this is the room and pillar mining method. We are making room, say, 8 meters by 6 meters. We are leaving the pillars in the foot wall first. Then next, we take the parting, that is waste, 
and then we approach to the hangwal loop. Next slide. And from top view, it will look like this. So level split in stop block and formation on room and pillars. So finally, after stopping operation, the block will look like this. Huge numbers of pillars. We have to lack in situ. But doing uh, this innovative mining method, Uranium Corporation achieved a great success. We are achieving almost 70 to 73 percent of recovery of oil, which is almost even uh, equal to or almost uh, the, the, the same amount, uh, same recovery which we are getting in cotton field methods. So this is a great achievement because uh, if you see the the nature of poor body, the gradient, uh, the parting, the uh, hangwall loose, everything in consideration, the method developed and uh, designed by Iridium Corporation and followed, it is a great success and we are achieving maximum. So almost more than 70 to 73% of recovery of poor deposits. Next slide. Now I will introduce the only open cast uranium mines uh, of Uranium Corporation of India Limited, which is Bandura open cast uranium mines. Uh, these mines was uh, started in 2007 with a uh, projected life of 20 years. The reserve the reserve was almost 20 million tons, but grade is very poor. The grade was about say 0.250, that means 250 gram in, uh, in 1000 kg of mineral with cutoff grade 0 0.20. The open piece has been designed with uh, overall pit slope of 47 degree for depth of 120 meter and 44 degree for depth of 150 meter while individual bench slope angle is about 80 degree. So now presently we are processing almost 8,000 tons of uh, uranium ore in our three mills, but these mines produce almost 45 percent. We started the mines uh, for a life of uh, 20 years. Now we are remaining 11 years only. Now we are working in uh, close uh, association with uh, regional director AMD to see the more reserve from South Turamdi areas that can be taken through these open stops. And we are trying our, uh, we, are, uh, we are both together, we are working to increase the life, say another 10, 15 years, so that the contribution of these mines can continue in this single design of operations. Next slide. So this is the picture of our open cast mines. Now we are working almost 100 meters from the surface. The mines is almost two kilometers in uh, strike-wise length and one kilometer in width. And it is very close to the Jamshedpur city, almost uh, three, four kilometers. And a thickly populated villages are there. So what problem we are facing that we are not being able to open up the mines because of uh, villages in very close proximity of our lease area. And we are not being able to conduct the blasting operations because for any blasting, uh, we need a safety zone of 300 meters, but our villages comes within 150 meters. But we have uh, designed and developed a, a blasting technique uh, with uh, experts and uh, with experts from Simphar and ISM Dhanbad. And uh, we have been allowed and permitted by Director General of Mine Safety to take blast within 150 meter of uh, villages. And we are successfully carrying out the blasting operation there. So major problem of uh, blasting is the fly rock. That can go, sometimes it can go beyond 500 meter. 
जो दो द सेफ्टी जोन इज 300 मीटर समटाइम्स इट कैन गो मोर देन 500 मीटर्स बट बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस ब्लास्टिंग टेक्निक दैट इज कंट्रोल ब्लास्टिंग वी आर रेस्ट्रिक्टिंग दिस थ्रो विद इन 50 मीटर सो दैट इज व्हाई डीजीएमएस हैज अलाउड अस टू टेक ब्लास्ट विद इन 150 मीटर्स ऑफ विलेजेस नेक्स्ट सो दिस इज द ब्रोकन मार्क एट द floor of the bench next so this is the dealing operation you know in bandura so the ore the mineralized zone the ore is not regular every taking every blast for taking every blast in the bench we have to give some some holes then our geophysicists they check the holes to demark the ore body and once the area is demarcated properly for ore then we start the actual drilling holes next slide uh, this is the regular operation of our geophysicist ore assay logging by moisture proof digital counter meter mdcrm instrument developed by instrumentation section amd so they if this this operation has to be done on regular basis to demarcate the actual area of ore so that the drilling and blasting operation can be carried out in the beach next uh, here we are We'll talk, so our operation in a very short clippings start the clip yes you see the blasting operation we are using 10000 kg of explosive at a time to produce almost 15000 tons of ore the black leather is here yeah now you see this control blasting the fly rock remains almost at the site of blasting it has not flown away so our technique kept the fly rock limited within the 50 meter of the site back back slide back back and you see the near by villages are within 150 meter of blasting zones and uh, the technique is to develop the technique of blasting to maintain safety and security during blasting particularly the problem of fly rock and noise also another important aspect in dust and vibrations there are many kacha houses just uh, vicinity of the mines and because of vibration sometimes uh, this uh, kacha houses develops cracks etc so all things are uh, uh, taken and the design is uh, finally made next in the right side of the slide we are showing the bulk uranium ore analyzer each and every truck which are coming out from the pit has to pass through this bulk uranium ore analyzer for checking of ore grade if the grade is more than 020 we will supply it to the mill and if it is even less than 02 we are not uh, dumping it on the waste dump we are dumping and storing it subgrade ore area subgrade uh, subgrade uh, dump yard area so each and every truck almost uh, we are uh, checking 150 to 160 trucks every day and one of the important aspect of this open cash is that the management of huge quantity of waste for producing of 20 million ton of ore 
we have to handle almost 65 to 70 million ton of waste. So this amount, it is a huge amount and we are uh, stacking it in the dump yard, specially designed dump yard. And it is approved by DGMS and also we have approval of MOEA and uh, approval from AERB. So major area of concern is the handling of waste. Next. Now here, uh, we'll show the how a, a green field when we take off and gradually we construct the mines and finally we get the view. This is the view, it is a view of Bhagjata. We get the land in this form. Then you see in the next picture, we started the mining operations. We are making access to the mine. Then you see the actual pictures of that constructions. So this way, we transform a greenfield to greenfield uh, uh, mine to productions. Now, so this is uh, all about the different uh, mining activities at uh, Uranium Corporation of India Limited. So basically, there are three kinds of um, mines methods we are following. So horizontal column field methods in our Singhum belt and in situ human pillar method uh, at TMPL mines. Now uranium processing plant of uranium corporation of uranium corporation, we have three plant, two at Jharkhand, at Jadugada and Turamdi, Jadugada the capacity is 2500 ton. Turamdi is 3000 tons. And our TMPL mines is also designed for 3000 tons. Okay. So this is the ore processing facilities. For our Jadugra plant, we supply ore from Jadugra mines, Bhatin mines, Bajata mines, and Narwa power mines. Narwa power mines is the the, the largest and the biggest mines uh, or underground mines in this area. And uh, Jadugura mines, uh, it is uh, the deep most mines. I mean, it's the second deepest mines in this country after Kola Goldfield. The mine is uh, operated up to 905 meters. Now mine, the Jadugura mine uh, ore reserve is uh, now limited. It will continue to produce say, around next five to six years, then its operation will cease. But as uh, you see, this uh, mill is fed with different kinds of food from different mines. We are processing almost 2,500 TPD at Jadugura. And nowadays, some amount of food we are also supplying from Bandura open cast mines to Jadugura plant. Next. Uh, this is the Turamdi plant. So we are supplying ore from Bandura mine, from Moldi mine and Turamdi mine. And uh, our processing plant is handling almost more than 3000 TPD at present. And our final product is uranium peroxide. Next. So this is the ore processing facilities at Tumulapulli. So Tumulapulli mines, you see the, the, the left side, the mines entry, there are three numbers of declines, mine entry. And uh, we are taking out the ore from underground after casting through conveyor to mill. Next. So uranium ore processing flow seat, if you see, so whatever ore we produce in our mines, we send to our mill, at mill, the first is grinding. Once grinding is done, then uh, for density control, we send it to a thickener. Then it is filtered, then sent for acid leaching. Here we follow the acid circuit. 
so here lichant is sulfuric acid now entire basically it is an uh, hydrometallurgy so entire salary is sent to the leaching tank and in the leaching tank uh, as a leachant we put sulfuric acid and uh, we maintain some temperature and uh, also use some oxidant pyrolusite is as it and after 10 to 11 hours the leaching becomes complete the next is the liquid and solid separations so when liquid and solid separation is done during leaching from the matrix uh, urinate that is u3 weight comes to the liquor and once the liquor is separated by acid filter it then the maximum is stains we are processing suppose 1000 uh, one ton of ore we are getting hardly say 300 uh, 250 to 300 kg of uranium once the liquor is separated that is sent to ion exchange for absorption of uranium in the resin so once from ion exchange the next process is the elution and uh, through elution that is uh, the taking out of uranium for precipitation then dewatering dry and finally the product next so side by side we are showing you the next channel that is the alkali circuit so as uh, the ore at uh, tmpl is carboniferous fire we cannot uh, cannot uh, follow the acid leaching technology here we use the alkali leaching circuit so up to the density control there is no changes in both the mills are, both kinds of mills are same so there is difference in leaching and uh, that that is a carbonate leaching it is done in heavy at high pressure and high temperatures vessel uh, and also for oxidants we put here liquid oxygen here the process is simple so once the leaching operation is uh, completed then there is separation of liquid and solid and then this liquid is sent for precipitation not the entire liquid this some amount of leachage is sent for precipitation and some amount again goes to the grinding circuit because of very low grade ultimately up once we get the leachage uh, your leach liquor it will not separate still a certain amount of u3 it comes to the solution so some amount come for precipitation and some amount goes to grinding circuit again and then dewatering and drying then finally the product as hdu that is sodium diuronide and here in the, uh, acid circuit our final product is uranium peroxide next ah yeah so this is the uranium precipitation and dewatering so once the leach recur is a uh, from the glitch liquor is taken in ppn section product precipitation section in both the mills and finally we have we we we, we recovered this yellow cap in the right side of this eh, that uh, this yellow color is a final product of uranium corporation and we disperse uh, this uh, yellow cake uh, to nfc hyderabad uh, presently we are dispatching two times in every 15 days we are sending Uh, our dispatch to nfc <laughs> so one of the major aspect of this hydro metallurgical process is the management of tailing so we are processing almost more than 8000 tons of mineral and uh, per day we are getting the final product almost uh, say 1.5 ton only so all this waste stellings almost 
and 8000 more than 8000 that has to be managed and that is managed in specially engineered designed impounded dam that is called tailing dam so this picture shows the tailing dam where we preserve it under the close uh, monitoring of vrc team and uh, this is the uh, uh, this is a huge task because tailing pond uh, management is a very important aspect of uh, our uh, hydro metallurgical process next you see once the tailings are sent to tailing pond they sent hydraulically so this is the in the left hand side you are see is the decant water the, the, the spillway from spillway we collect the decant water and this decant water again sent to decant water pond and from that decant water pond we send it to our effluent treatment plant where we process the water because this water has heavy chloride and manganese and others particularly the manganese and also the ph of course we maintain the ph 9.5 before disposing in the tailing pond so once this water is processed in our etp some amount of water we reuse for our milling purpose and then the the treated water in jharkhand area we discharge in the public places after maintaining the the the, the quality the, the different uh, parameters of the radionuclides and others as per the guidelines of pollution control board and uh, arb but at our tumulapalli mill it is a, a zero discharge mill basically so whatever water they get from the decant pond again that water they use in their plant but this year we uh, we experience a lot of problem because of heavy rainfall at that area uh in some year back also we experienced a rainfall of 400 to 450 mm this year we get almost 1150 mm so that huge quantity of water the managing that huge quantity of uh, is a very difficult and uh, we get a problem during the monsoon and presently also we are getting problem so much so water has entered into the mines we have a huge quantity of water undergone also so that water we are regularly supplying to mill though we are not drawing any water from chitraboti river now underground water and decant water even more even in surplus so it is a zero discharge mill but uh, we are afraid that uh, if we could not manage the water by developing a, a, a effluent treatment plant at uh, tumulapalli it may create problem in future to handle the water we are not being able to dispose any water outside in public domain next now uh, in a nutshell i will highlight some challenges of low grade uranium mining and milling so it is a well known fact that uh, every corner of the world wherever there is uh, this mining of uranium they are doing mining business of uranium deposit where grade is more than 0.12% of u3 weight whereas in india uh, we are working in a grade as low as 0.05% if you see the feed grade of our mill in singhum area the feed grade at jadugara is almost uh, nowadays 0.035% at turambi it is around 0.03 and in our tumulapalli because of basic uh, nature of poor body and uh, the problem of uh, dilutions because of uh, uh, parting in between uh, and also we cannot uh, uh, avoid certain amount of waste there and we are also getting grade about say 0.32 to 0.34% so this uh, low grade uranium mining we are doing and we are doing successfully and we don't have any other option also 
because whatever uranium deposits we have, all our low grade, and with their associated problem also. So managing all these problems with low grade, we are successfully uh, processing, mining, and processing, and uh, producing uranium and supplying to the nuclear fields so as a flagship industry in the in nuclear field cycle. And in maximum cases, Uranium Corporation of India Limited is practicing mining in uranium ore, which are moderate to thin in weight. In maximum places, three to four meters. Sometimes it is more than ten meters. In maximum cases, we will have the deposits at not more than in Jadugara now more not more than five meters. In Tunamli, in some places with that more, but slightly this less. So in huge tipping ratio. Tipping ratio in the sense, we have to manage a huge quantity of waste to produce a single ton of ore. And this is only because of that, not only for open cast mines, but, all, but also for uh, underground mines also. Because you need, you see, as the ore bodies are thin, we are giving same amount of accesses. We are developing the mines, we are giving decline or sap, whatever it is. We are developing in the waste and developing that kind of waste, whatever ore we are getting, that is not matching. So our stripping ratio varies in undergone mine also, 16 to 25 to 30 percent. In small mines, it is almost 30 percent. In big mines like Narua, it is coming around 14 to 15 percent. So already I've discussed the waste dumping management of uh, open cast mines. Now we are exploring the innovative ideas for deeper level mining for deep sitting ore bodies in uh, Jadugura area as well as in uh, Tunamdi area. Another aspect is the tailing pond management and socioeconomic position. Here in uh, particularly in the mining field, Every day is a new day. Because there are a lot of socioeconomic problem because everybody wants to, uh, well, because these mines are all in a very remote uh, villages, I mean, mainly in the tribal areas here in that single. So there is huge uh, pressure of employment. So every day we have to face this kind of problem here at uh, single and also at, at the MPL also. So for mining engineers and uh, for exp mill uh, experts, for everyone who are working in field, uh, almost every day is a new day for us. Next. Now, cell sufficiency in uranium production. So, as we all know, sir, whatever uh, uranium is required in country now, we are being a, uh, we are providing only 40 percent of that. So, in line with this requirement of uranium to fuel nuclear nuclear power plants, UCL has already outlined a plan for massive expansion, which includes maintaining sustained supply from existing facilities through debottlenecking of certain deficiencies, modernizations, and capacity expansion of some existing units, and construction of new production facilities mines and plants in different parts of the country. You see major production centers are planned in Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Telangana, Rajasthan, and Meghalaya, taking into consideration of the source already identified in different geological basins by Atomic Mineral Directorate for exploration and research. And we hope that with the present initiatives of opening up new mines, particularly in the Korappa area and uh, Rohil at Delivered in Rajasthan and also the expansion of uh, Tumulapulli, uh, we will be able to meet the uh, demand of uranium for our nuclear uh, fuel cycle. Next. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure there will be some questions. Uh, Ramana Murthy, can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, uh, uh, thank you for that very uh, comprehensive presentation, uh, Mr. Manna. Uh, the floor is now open for questions. 
there are three already lined up in the uh, chat window perhaps i'll first take them up sanjay saxena he is asking how long would our present uranium depo deposits last are we having adequately rich uranium deposits that could be used in fabrication of phwr fuels that's a question mr mana could you get that please uh, yes yes yeah sir uh, frankly speaking we we uh, don't have any uh, we, we we if you see uh, there is no dearth of deposits of reserves but only problem is the grade <clears throat> we have in different parts of the country particularly in the andhra region uh, we have already uh, amd has established more than 200 million tons of deposits but only thing is that grade is poor so now with this poor grade also we are successfully mining at tumulapalli and we are processing and we got success i am very sure we will be able to open up kanampalli mines just nearby the tumulapalli mines these mines uh, if we can uh, develop and uh, we can uh, work then uh, we will be self sufficient for many years so far as the supply of uranium is concerned sir okay thank you and a follow up question from mr saxena how are we managing fuel fabrication if the pure if the uranium grade is of poor quality and i'll ask another question also maybe you can answer both of them in these mines apart from uranium are there any other minerals also found and processed uh, for the last portion of the question i answer sir we are mandated to mine and uh, process for uranium only so there are very traces you see not only uranium there are many other metals like uh, copper and uh, other minerals also present in the molybdenum uh, at uh, at ore but we are mandated to mine and process the uranium so earlier we were requiring copper at our jadugra plant molybdenum and magnetite also so now also we are uh, uh, as a by product we are producing magnet uh, magnetite but copper and uh, molybdenum uh, now we are not uh, not producing sir so now we are mainly focusing on the increasing the amount of uranium only and first question any comments on the question regarding uh, fabrication of fuel despite poor uh, uranium quality any comments on that or would you like sir, to sir we have already said a uh, 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 lot of talk is there uh, recently dr sivastav from nfc the chief executive he came to jadugora he also very satisfied with our product and now it is we are uh, regular basis in last 2 3 years uh, sending uh, concentrate which is almost uh, 89 to 90% pure earlier it was when we are producing magnesium dibromide it was almost uh, 70 72 to 70. 72 to 75% now whatever concentrate we are producing the grade is good that is almost 90% 89 to 90% pure sir because of peroxide uranium peroxide peroxide <clears throat> okay uh, mr rathaya you have raised your hand so can you unmute yourself and uh, please present your question yeah madam please go ahead can i ask questions or yeah yes please thank you very much mr chairman i i come from i'm i hail from meghalaya where the deposit of uh, uranium as everybody knows am i audible yeah 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 so the thing is this uh quite a number of politicians have gone down to jadugura quite a number of social workers have gone down to jadugura and many of them have given positive comments but some of them are confused or rather they are apprehensive because they met some of the workers at the level of uh, you know laborers and all like that and they said that they are suffering from bleeding from the nose bleeding from various parts of the body there is hardly any medical facility or checkups which uh, uh, it's listed in the iaea norms 
that is one question and uh, but else for the scientists and all it's fine for engineers and all there's a lot of uh, health facility available and then comes the question of disposal of nuclear waste uh, i got from the media persons who went down there in the cd in the form of a cd i don't know whether it was doctored or not that the the disposal was done in a very shabby manner and one thing i don't understand i saw just now the divers those who entered i mean who were working in the caves they had their uh, helmets on but i don't see any dosimeter i might be wrong of course and uh, nobody is wearing any shield lead shielding or anything like that which they wear in the city scan room or similarly in uh, nuclear imaging so this i'm confused so what i find is that the health uh, part is not given much importance that is why we are apprehensive here in meghalaya many of the people are apprehensive unless of course i don't know so the thing is that uh, and then there are some history his <clears throat> excuse me history of uh, still births madam uh, and, if you can ask the question i mean you are giving a a lecture maybe you should no no i'm asking the question. health facility yeah that's the question yeah so and what, the health check ups from time to time yeah, by various can specialists yeah. can i can i intervene ramana murthy uh, sure 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 Yes, sir. Uh, Ramna Murthy, I am. Uh, I am from BRC. Yeah, we know, sir. I worked on uranium processing uh, for several years. If there is no mining in Meghalaya, how do you think uh, the uh, mineral wealth which is present in the uh, uh, ground is causing all these uh, problems with the people who are living there? Because there is no mining activity. That is one thing. Second, 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 just uh, second, the, second, the, the me, chairman, me, allow me to reframe my question. The thing is that you are, you are giving all the explanations. So I was saying when there is no mining activity. So no, I'm not talking of the mining in Meghalaya. Huh? I'm talking about the permission why it was not granted, either by the state government or by different civic bodies, because of these problems which they were told from Jadugura. Okay, let, let let me now uh, tell you. See the Meghalaya ore body is such that if you water goes through that, nearly forty to sixty percent of uranium will go in solution. It's still rainwater, so that will cause a contamination. In fact, you should be happy if you are allowing uh, uh, UCL to go and process it, so that they will remove the ore, process it, uh, take out all the uranium which otherwise is contaminating their uh, water, which will happen. if you are not processing if you process then all this uranium will be taken out and most likely there will be no problem and once they put up a establishment they will also set up the health facility because then they are mining there so obviously you should look from the holistic point of view not just from that health facility should come first and then we will observe it because you see the problem is in situ there just rain water will the 40 to 60% of uranium from the uh, host rocks and that will go into the water bodies this is the kind of nature of deposit occurring there the understanding from this side is that if the usual people with due respect have been uh, what should i say careless is a too harsh a word have been careless with the health facility for the common man the workers who are there they will do a similar thing in meghalaya uh, that is the extra pollution I, i think you are you are posing a problem in a different angle the problem already exists there and so that problem needs to be solved and that problem can be solved only if you process the ore body or the deposit which are present there because if half of it is going into the run of uh, rain water then it is contaminating your water body and it is going to the people and they will drink that water they will do everything else with that so it will affect their health from that angle so if you take out the uranium by processing it then naturally the water will be much better quality and rain water will not get contaminated their water bodies will not get contaminated this should be the uh, motto of the politicians and this should be educated to them it is a 
not only taking out uranium, it all, also protecting your environment and the uh, water body because no uh, direct rain water will leach out the uranium because it is already in oxidized state and it got, gets dissolved. 40 to 60 percent of uranium gets dissolved only by running water. Can I get a clarification from the person who's, who gave the talk from UCIL? Uh, yes, you can ask facility. See, okay. I am also. I also worked with them, so they also know yeah. very well. Yes, sir. I have developed the process. Can of you kindly already. clarify, Dr. Manna, about I, the health uh, facility? I'm uh, Chanchal Manna. Uh, Madam, with due respect, I want to tell you that uh, whatever we are doing, we are doing the business of mining and uh, processing. But so, as, so far as the radio. Uh, radioactive safety and security is concerned. That is independently monitored by Bhava Atomic Research Center (BRC) and AERV. And and also, we are under the uh, very close scrutiny of Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. And also, we are guided by International Atomic Energy Agency. In our almost in all plants, all establishment, there is independent ten. Uh, trained uh, uh, team establishment of uh, bar and uh, they directly report to the uh, DA. We are not controlling them. I see. So they are monitoring and they are reporting to the their concerned authority. And uh, whenever there is problem, they immediately inform us and we take actions. But uh, it is not uh, true that whatever we are doing in the uh, in the process of mining and milling, that we are spreading radioactivity, it is a big thing. So far as uh, all the records maintained by Bar, that uh, tells otherwise. So that much I can comment only, being a mining expert. Thank you. Uh, Thank madam, you. I am I am from uh, Atomic Energy Regulatory Bo uh, Board. Uh, just I want to comment on your health concern. Uh, we are taking uh, the periodic medical examinations reports, uh, all the UCL facilities they are submitting. And it is noted that the health uh, records, uh, it is at par with the uh, public, at par with the common public. Uh, all the records, the all the safety and occupational certifying surgeons, they are uh, reporting the data. Also, uh, radioactive dose, Everything is being recorded and quarterly reports, annual reports are being submitted that is being monitored and it is uh, fine and when and the radon dosimeter, whatever you are asking whether it is given or not, every person given this ambient uh, dosimeter is also there also personal dosimeter is given for all the core mine worker, ARB is uh, clearly uh, keeping all the vigilance and it is being uh, uh, monitored thoroughly. So uh, as far as the health concern and our regulatory inspection teams also goes and we are checking all the radiological aspects. So there is uh, an, uh, if all the effluent treatment, whatever you are seeing and the, the public, anything goes to the public. We see that it is maintaining the drinking water limit. And as far the records and as far our regulatory supervision, it is absolutely doing fine. So I all those concern, whatever you are talking is been taken care. Yes, madam. <laughs> No, because, uh, see, I am quite convinced, but the people, mostly politicians, as well as the, the media persons, that is the thing, that is the whole problem. They are not convinced. Uh, that is why the personally you should visit, I feel, uh, because I haven't uh, been atomic, there, energy, atomic energy, all the people, they are having the, I think, public awareness program also. There is some myth. Definitely, uh, uh, people have uh, apprehensions. Even uh, we are going for the inspections, we are seeing the sites, we are uh, um, uh, seeing the facility. And definitely, if you talk uh, uh, talk to the DAE or uh, say public awareness team, definitely you can visit and you can see. I am sure whatever you are getting, there is always some you know uh, vested uh, interest people. They will give some propaganda, but that may not be always true because uh, Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, they are working for the publics and we're taking every precautions and it is independently regulating and every for giving clearance for any small projects also, there will be multi-level of review. There will be always, uh, I mean, there are 
always site visits and uh, this uh, do, we are taking all the safety precautions and we unless we are satisfied on the safety precautions we are not allowing to uh, go ahead with any of the project so uh, and the periodic regulatory checking as well as the safety and uh, health uh, records is being monitored by brc as well as the health physics unit and also arb is uh, supervi um, uh, supervising all the records so yeah. it is going yeah, yeah. thank Thanks you very right. much at least your question. answer is direct to the point not roundabout and uh, but i wish this could be given to the media yeah, yeah. Uh, mr rastogi you can kindly uh, unshare your screen why are you sharing your screen actually it's i am sharing by mistake but uh, how do we do it can you please tell me hey you have to go to the top and say uh, unshare green button there could be a green button there is stop sharing button i think uh, the yeah. bottom this triple yeah but it is showing your viewing rastogi screen that's what it shows yeah. Uh, Ramarao ji, I would like to say something about this to the madam actually. Madam, okay. my uh, my name is Manchanda. Uh, I belong originally to BRC, but right now uh, I'm working for Indian Nuclear Society. I see. So Indian Nuclear Society is an independent organization which we like to interact with uh, all the academicians or all the social activists who have any questions, any doubts. about this nuclear radiations the type of thing which you have mentioned here so what i am now trying to suggest to you is please write to indian nuclear society with all your doubts we will try to it's not my just a minute sir it's not my doubt i am all for mining but then i am an independent person i am i was teaching in the university and doing nuclear physics uh, research also but it is the opinion of the media and quite a number of social I, I, workers i am very happy that you are articulating the uh, doubts of many of your colleagues so what i am suggesting is if you are satisfied it is fine in future if you get any such uh, doubts please address to the indian nuclear society we will do our best to address to your doubts indian Thank nuclear society much. very easy to read just write indian nuclear society at the rate gmail dot com just thank you very much them. and also one small point i want to add you started comparing the precautions which are taken during ct scan and what is being done by the radiation worker during mining do you know we are now comparing mountain with the mole hill actually the reason is the the amount of radiation the nature of radiation the penetrating power of the radiation for ct scan is very very different than what we any say during this mining operations so these are very different type of uh, quantity wise and quality wise very different type of radiation so all this we will be able to address you know if you send all your doubts so we should not compare these two scenarios at all actually this is my humble submission to you uh, yes madam what dr manchanda is telling the lead shielding is not required in this such, such cases okay, your personal uh, radon dosimetry and the dosimeters are sufficient that's they are carrying out no no that is while... fine that i know but then how do we explain this to the people who got the cd from there from jadugura and uh, there was a lot of broadcasting here That is I think, uh, madam, my oh, suggestion is, Mr. Ramarao, can I intervene? Just, yeah, just a minute. Just Mr. A minute. Ramarao, can I intervene? Malotra here. Please go ahead. Yeah, Betilda, I am surprised. We have gone through all this process. This is Malotra, Betilda. Yes, I we can see gone, you. We, we have gone through all this process. You know how many interactions? I know. Of Meghalaya with yeah, this. I was there. Who, we have done this is entire exercise and today we appear to be back to square one the thing is that i think uh, be it the politicians mm -hmm. in meghalaya and be it some people in meghalaya they are not at all interested in mining to be done there so so they they keep on posing questions so i think if somebody if somebody is really sleeping we can wake him up but somebody who is pretending to be asleep it is very difficult and that is why you see you see that more than 15 years we 
maintained an office of ucil there and unfortunately we had to close down because ucil is a professional body it's a commercial body we had to close down all those operations <clears throat> and if people of meghalaya are happy sitting with the uranium deposit safe under the earth let them be happy and now since you are, are telling that all these questions should be answered let people of ucil uh, people of meghalaya show interest approach ucil request ucil that we are interested in doing mining i no, no. personally i take the responsibility no you listen to me personally i take responsibility that i will organize to clear all the doubts but for not mining in meghalaya we don't want to clear any doubts and in fact i advise earlier also it had been done that please bother about the rat hole mining of coal in your state people are dying of it you are bringing people from bihar and killing them in the rat hole mines of uranium so i i think it is better to bother about those operating rat hole mines of uranium rather than singing about uranium deposit and i suggest as secretary ins i suggest the organizers of the webinar this discussion may be terminated here okay i think uh, madam your all questions are answered and i i i so as far I, I, as i am concerned if dr malhotra will remember i had always uh madam can we piece. can we move on and as uh, mr malhotra has suggested um you can share uh, whatever doubt you have with all the office bearers or whatever other no, i was always pro uh, mining if uh, dr malhotra will remember and i can oh, i ask a question alone. yeah now we'll move on madam thank you thank so, you can i ask, ask a question it? please sanat kumar here ah, yeah. please sir please go ahead uh to the speaker sir molybdenum is very precious so what are you doing with it you are not throwing it away no you must be doing something with it even if it is small quantities manna manna thank please you. come in yeah yeah thank you uh, dr ramara yeah we are getting into a debate which is not going to be <laughs> best thing is that uh, i will request the lady to send the question to dr manna so now and then he will reply respond to it to it properly yes yes i want to respond sir there, there, there must be a lot of literature available on that one publication to that one that can be forwarded to that one there. so i think it let us stop it here so that we can go ahead on the thing there. i i see the concern of the public and we have we will have to answer it properly but i'm sure that this has been done a number of times thank you yeah so mr ratiya you have raised your hand can you please come forward yeah. to the question yeah good evening to all sir yeah, actually my question my question is uh, in general sir actually i am a, a <laughs> geologist uh, who worked in amd hello sir audible go ahead go ahead, go ahead. yeah yeah Sir, this, is, this is a general question sir to the forum actually uh, in india amd has discovered more than 3 uh, 3 lakh tons of u308 and that yeah. to more than 50% of the resources are in unified ap ap or telangana mainly in kadapa basin yeah but uh, here the government uh, they have passed a resolution that no mining activity will further take place in these states they have passed a resolution in the state assembly also they are dead against to the uh, uranium mining in these states this trend is going everywhere not in uh, ap in other states also everybody is uh, taking this uh, type of course so how the how the government or the, the da is going to tackle this uh, issue because otherwise amd resources will remain as geological resources not as mineable resources how the government is going to tackle this is a not a specific question to the uh, uh, to the it is a general question to the forum i i think you have to wait for the next seminar so next seminar will be given by the director amd mr ratiya I, i i request you to join on on the next uh, webinar which will okay, be for next from now thank so you thank so you he will answer your question okay. okay okay 
Ramaraji, I want to ask uh, the speaker a question related to his presentation. Um, Man Mananji, this is regarding, you know, uh, you have now talked about several end products. If I remember, you know, we have MDU, we have ADU, we have peroxide, we have uh, sodium diurinate. Sodium diurinate, if I recollect properly, it is coming from your Tumla Palli for that carbonate leaching. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, now, what I want to know is that uh, finally you said, you know, this uh, peroxide give you some 80 to 90 percent uh, uh, uranium. So is yes. it uh, now we have uh, switched over from MDU or ADU to the peroxide once for all? Are we now sticking to the peroxide? That is what my question is. And how does it compare with sodium diuretic? Uh, so far as sodium peroxide is concerned in our both the mills at uh, Turamdi and uh, Jadugura, we are not uh, producing any magnesium diuretic. Totally stopped. We are our product is uh, totally peroxide, and uh, system has been established, and uh, it is running very good since, one year. Uh, since the last one year. Both the mills are producing peroxide. Uh, so far as uh, Tumulapoli SDU is concerned, so it is also in a very good quality. Quality wise, it is also not bad. Uh, but higher also at Tumulapoli also we are uh, trying to put peroxide plant. Okay. okay. So that means uh, do I understand correctly the peroxide is the best as, the as, as far as the NFC is concerned? Within some time peroxide will be the main product. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amarao should be... Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, uh, we, could, we should wind up the question now, and I'll request. Sir, what you do you do with that molybdenum? Yeah, 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 yeah. Please answer. Uh, sir, uh, you see, we are getting traces of molybdenum now. Major uh, contribution of molybdenum was coming from our Puramdi uh, uh, Jadugoda mines. As we go deeper down at Jadugoda, and contribution of Jadugoda was has decreased. Earlier, Jadugoda mines was producing more than 800 tons. Now these mines on an average producing 500 ton and we are working almost 700, 800 meter depth. Where the concentration of molybdenum is less than earlier. So we are not uh, recovering uh, molybdenum as byproduct now. Okay. Is it not a national waste? You, know, you should save it somewhere. Yes. No? See, at Jadugoda, uh, we are, uh, we are, uh, processing 2,500 tons of coal. So out of that 2,500, only 500 is coming from Jadugoda. So in the beginning, what Uranium Corporation is doing, we are processing uh, Jadugoda over almost 1,000 ton, and we are getting good amount of molybdenum. And uh, with the deeper depth, the concentration of molybdenum has also decreased. So uh, 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 extraction of molybdenum now is not economical for us. Because contribution of Jadugura mines has decreased. Okay. Malhotra ji, I think you said. Yeah, Malhotra ji, please, uh, I hand over to you for delivering the vote of thanks now. Okay. I think we had a, a wonderful lecture. So first and foremost, let me thank the Godhead Bean speaker, the CMD of UCIL, who unfortunately could not be present here. But basically, he agreed to deliver the webinar. So I'm thankful first to him and second and very much thankful to Mr. Manna, who as a replacement did a wonderful job. I mean, in the absence of CMD, he did a wonderful job. I am only recollecting three, four days back, I was seeing the IPL auction, you know, IPL players auction. <laughs> so somebody from UK had come for, for conducting the auction. And right on the stage, he fell down, became unconscious. So an Indian was called at half an hour's notice. And he did a wonderful auction. People said we did not know that the talent lies within our India. So I think uh, I, I just recollect that incident, which is hardly four days old. So Mr. Manna, you have done a wonderful job. 
and you, presented the complete operations of ucil in a very lucid manner and uh, when you talk about ucil of course i personally become a little biased jo do in first 20 years of my career i was working in the field of heavy water and later on when i shifted to dae though i have never worked in the laboratory connected with uranium but i i can say that i have participated uh, in in the uh, operations of ucil and of amd and so i get really today i was emotionally very charged up we were i remember how dr chidambaram once uh, had sent me to find out what is what is going on in jadugoda and new cmd was taking over mr ramendra gupta so i think if i recollect in june 2000 to 2000 i went there i met mr gupta also later on we became very good friends and i want to share here that today mr manna very proudly he told seven mines in ucil and one mine in tomalapalle so i think mr manna will remember he joined in 95 at that time there were only three mines okay and one processing yes. plant today whatever program you see i think we should be very very thankful to mr ramendra gupta because after joining as cmd of ucil he opened up the field he expanded the operations of ucil wonderfully the fruits of which are being reaped even today so i don't yeah. know whether uh, whether ramendra gupta is present here or not but i thought while delivering my vote of thanks i i must thank him also and some some other people connected with this uh, uh, program uh, we, uh, dr suri is one of them having developed the process for tumalapalle alkali leaching then dr sarangi i think i saw him as an orient dr sarangi who was with uh, ucil mr vp raja you are muted you are muted bharat raja you are muted secretary in the department in 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 the uh, time period of 2000 uh, so i think and dr kakotkar himself because kakot dr kakotkar almost formed a task force for for expanding the operations of this mine so i think i will not waste too much of time on that but uh, i was emotionally charged mm-hmm. up so i wanted to thank all these people and as far as that question from uh, dr uh, betilda is uh, concerned i think though we handled it properly but again i want to tell her that i did not mean to say that she is against uranium mining i was only suggesting the people who have brought a cd from jadugoda and who are speaking against uranium mines uh, at jadugoda so they are not allowing i have i have a message for those people that let them keep their uranium buried under the earth and as dr suri said let this uranium be washed away by the rain water and let it travel to bangladesh so maybe after some 50 <laughs> years or 100 years bangladesh will do the mining of that uranium if they are happy with that let them but at least let them bother about the rat hole mining anyway coming back to my uh, vote of thanks i next i thank uh, our president of ins huh? and the entire ec of ins for oh, conducting this oh, webinar yeah. series but oh, the yeah. series yeah. is going on yeah. today we have completed the 6th the 16th uh, yeah. webinar yeah. i also thank mr shimjit rajgopal and uh, uh, mr gd mittal for once again every every webinar uh, i tell that for mm-hmm. propagating mm-hmm. the message of uh, about web, uh, our webinars and of course how could i forget the webinar subcommittee very ably headed by uh, mr rama rao and his colleagues uh, uh, who are doing a wonderful job and uh, i think before i close down uh, i have to announce the next uh, uh, webinar in the nuclear fuel cycle if when we draw the nuclear fuel cycle first we put amd that they explore the uranium ores and then we put ucil that whatever is explored by amd <coughs> part of it is mined by ucil but i think in our ins webinar series we have gone the other way so we have first covered uh, nfc who make the fuel 
Next, today we have covered UCIL, who supply the yellow cake to NFC so that they can make the fuel. And next, next webinar will be how uranium and other uh, atomic minerals are mined. That will be delivered by Dr. D. K. Pinha, Director AMD. His topic will be milestones and vision for exploration of atomic minerals in India. So I look forward to a, another splendid talk in the next webinar and request all of you to join and request your friends. You are muted. Yeah, I think he has completed. So we stop the webinar here. Thank you. Thank you, Malotraji. Thank you very much. Mannaji, thank you for your wonderful talk and uh, good preparation by you. Slides were very excellent, very illustrative. And uh, there's a lot of message uh, for all of us to uh, understand and digest. And maybe uh, uh, we will invite you again uh, in the next series of our webinar. So kindly, you, kindly convey our thanks to your uh, CMD and all the team that helped you in getting uh, logged in into this program and uh, for that wonderful talk. Thank you very much. And uh, well, thank, you. thank you very much. It was excellent presentation by you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I will request all the virtual uh, uh, participants to end the meeting. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>